Okay, hello and welcome to another session of team. The today's module is CNS and I'm very thankful for the volunteers for today. Um, Dr. Ashwini, Dr. Maria, Dr. Asad, Dr. Iman and Dr. Nuran. Uh, so without wasting any more time, uh, let's start. Dr. Ashwini will be the ex examiner right now and Dr. Maria would be the hot seat volunteer. Over to you, Dr. Ashwini and Dr. Maria. Hello. Hello, hi. 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 So this patient has just MRI images and I'm gonna start showing you in the case of, yeah. Okay, so I'm presented with multi-sequential MRI brain of a patient. Mm, history is withheld for the moment. So I'm presented with the uh, coronal T1 weighted image of the same patient. The most uh, conspicuous abnormality that I'm looking for, that is an Yeah, that's a well-defined uh, rounded abnormal signal intensity seen within the left right occipital region uh, encompassing the cortex and uh, it's returning high point and signal on T1 weighted image. I just want to uh, see it on rest of the sequence. Please, can you show me? Okay, so on uh, T2 weighted image, it is returning hyper intense signal with surrounding low signal intensity rim. It is also uh, extending to involve the subcortical white matter. I'm looking for uh, more lesions. Can you please scroll down? So, there are, uh, in addition to this lesion, uh, there are a few prominent VR spaces. So please show me the flare and DWI, contrast all the sequences. So in flare image, it is returning mixed signal intensity. Okay, rest of the brain pen camera looks to me normal, no evidence of any hemorrhage. The ventricle looks to me fine. Basal cisterns are okay. Okay, show me the contrast and DWI, please. So, there are no ADC. Yeah, the on DWI it's not showing hyper intensity, no bright signal. And again, on post contrast image, I'm looking for some enhancement. There is some minimal enhancement uh, noted along its peripheral margin, its inferior aspect. So in view of the uh, this uh, lesions, the solitary lesion, which is the uh, cortical based and um, not showing significant post-contrast enhancement, I'm suspecting uh, a benign uh, neoplastic lesion, um, most likely a low-grade glioma. And, um, and uh, in my routine, there's some disturbance in the line. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. No, it's fine. Okay, so uh, my other uh, differential uh, would be uh, venous infarct, but since the all the uh, venous sinuses are okay. Dural venous sinuses, okay, it's showing normal enhancement. So again, it's uh, very unlikely. So I would go for a follow-up. Can you localize this tumor? Do you think this is in a white matter predominant lesion or a cortical predominant lesion? Or yeah, it's in, it, it's basically uh, at a junction of both. It's also abutting a bit about the cortex and some part is located in the white Let's matter. Another view. Mm. So um, other differential would be a, a tumor effective demyelination, but uh, again, the lack of enhancement uh, and uh, um, solitary in nature of the lesion, uh, again, it would be the less likely. So, 
so uh, does this patient have a history of fits yeah the patient has history of epilepsy okay is any old imaging no nothing is available okay so i would keep the uh, differential of uh, low grade glioma in this patient okay what would Top you do Top okay. most differential, yeah. What are your other differentials? Other differential uh, would be an a a benign uh, space occupying lesion, such as such as any cyst. It can be a cyst, and um, and I would uh, keep the differential of the demyelination, the tumor effective demyelination. You need some cortical based tumors that you know of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we can we can keep the ganglioglioma, the D net, uh, disembryoplastic tumors. We okay. can keep those as well. All right. So I'll move on to the next case. So thirty years old male patient with increasing headache and visual symptoms. So I have just the CT image of this patient. Okay, so I'm presented with an unenhanced CT scan exil of the same patient. And uh, the most striking abnormality that is an heterogeneous hyperdense signal, uh, abnormal uh, mass lesion, which is seen occupying the pineal gland, partly encompassing the posterior aspect of the third ventricle until it is reaching up to the um third ventricle producing significant uh, uh, obstruction at this level with upstream hydrocephalus with subependymal seepage and uh, another lesion is noted within the uh, cellar and supracellar location and uh, um, in addition to that there is a focal areas of uh, coarse calcification um, which is seen within the center of the lesion and um, the rest of the parenchyma. Do you is, have the MR images as well? I can show okay. you. The okay, I would go for an MRI brain. Um, what is your evaluation at this stage? In view of, in view of these two uh, lesion occupying the midline structures, the pineal as well as the cellar suppressor, my topmost uh, differential would be the germinoma. And uh, other uh, other DD we, which we can include, uh, that is the pinealoblastoma and uh, retinoblastoma. I, I would also I also want to uh, see uh, the orbits of this patient. Uh, can I see, check the orbit? And also um, uh, um, would review the clinical presentation. The orbit the and this is the other. Okay, so orbit is fine. Is having visual complaints and headache. Okay, so probably it's affecting the optic chiasma. So patient has uh, such symptoms. Um, so I would keep the differential of the germinoma. Can I show? Uh, can you show me the next uh, investigation that is MR? Okay, so MRI uh, imaging confirming the diagnosis of a mass uh, which is causing ex which is expanding into the adjacent thalami and uh, partly obscuring the basal cisterns with the upstream hydrocephalus and uh, KVM septum tripositum noted. Mm. Can you tell me of the- I'm looking, yeah, yeah. Um, what, would your, what would your next line of management be? Yeah, I would go for um, MRI uh, whole, whole axis, the spinal axis along with the CSF. Uh, check, checking to rule out the drop mats because drop it mats are very much common in these kind of masses. Okay, okay. What would you advise to the patient? As in, what your, what would your next line be after that? Um, How would you manage the case? Yeah, we we can proceed uh, this case in the uh, in an MDT, neurological MDT, uh, with a view to biopsy this case. And also would go for uh, staging, further staging of Is this. Is there patient. any other emergency that you can point out to in this case, which would require immediate 
Yeah, um, since there is a moderate 20 kilo megali uh, hydrocephalus, so I would urgently refer this case to neurosurgical team uh, on board uh, in a view for the VP shunting. Okay. In order to uh, reduce the intra. Should this be shunted? Mm, yeah, 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 yeah. And now just I have. Yeah, okay. there is a. By repositioning, or you'd have to find out the time. Yeah, yeah, it's it's I uh, probably not working yeah. well, so we want to check it further. Young okay. female presenting with weakness. Okay. So um, I'm presented with an unenhanced axial uh, CT scan brain of the of a young patient who is presented with right-sided weakness. Um, the most striking abnormality that is an area of uh, abnormal hyperdensity occupying the left uh, basal ganglia with an intraventricular dissection, uh, uh, some sort of mass effect and minimal midline shift is also there. And um, the hyperdensity is also seen within the third ventricle. Uh, so the cause of an intraparenchymal bleed in a young patient would be? The patient has had no history of trauma. Yeah, young patient, uh, and we, we have to look for some uh, vasculitis. Uh, and um, specifically, we can, we can uh, check for the vas vascular structures. Some phacomatosis can be ruled out in young patients. Uh, we can also look for some bleeding disorders, um, like bleeding profile to be done uh, to rule out the cause of uh, uh, hemorrhages. And we will proceed um, this with the uh, CT angiogram or MR angiogram, whichever is available. Uh, and um, just to rule out any kind of uh, arteriovenous malformation or any vascular malformation, which can be a cause these of are this. These the CT angiogram images? Yeah. So these are the CT angiogram of the same patient. Uh, uh, it's revealing um, area of uh, abnormality. You tell um, me which axis you want me to show it and I'll show yeah, it. Yeah, show me the axial section first. Okay, so a bunch of vascular structures is noted adjacent to the M2 and M3 uh, part of the left MCA and uh, probably an idus. And it's draining uh, via a cortical vein into the adjacent. Um, can you show me the superficial veins? Mm, yeah, yeah, more cranially. Some sinuses. Uh, so it's draining via large, yeah. So it's draining into the left uh, sigmoid sinus via large enlarged cortical torsion. Receiving it with arterial feeders from the left MC, M2, and M3 branches. So it's an AVM okay. malformation with bleed and adjacent away, uh, steel phenomena. So, so, what would your differentials for an AVM be, a cerebral AVM? Um, yes, in cerebral AVM, uh, arteriovenous malformations, uh, we can further keep this. Uh, uh, staging with an um, with an uh, DSA digital substraction angiography, and we can refer this patient for further uh, gamma and I for um, neurosurgeon uh, on board. We can keep them both for further management. Other differential would be of AV fistula, and uh, and um, can be considered. But again, it uh, DSA would be the uh, uh, the do you know Game. any scoring uh, pattern for EVM? Like, Spatular Martin classification we use. And what does uh, that take into consideration? Yeah, here uh, we can score this greater than six as it's involving the eloquent areas as well as the deep and superficial parts. Both are involved and it's great. NIDAS is greater than uh, four centimeter. Do you think it's involving the deep venous system? Uh, yeah, I think the internal cerebral vein is also involved. Uh, can you show me the internal cerebral vein? I thought 
some some uh, draining veins were also involved. Uh, no, 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 no. These are not involved in this case. And as per the size, do you think this is more than six centimeters? Mm. I'm not sure. It's a subjective kind of feeling. So right. maybe okay. Okay. Four centimeters. Okay. Dr. Ashwini, if the next case is a small one, then go ahead. Otherwise, the time is up. Okay, it's not a small case. Or do you want me to show a small case? I could do that. Yeah, yeah just yeah. a small case and then the feedback because otherwise yeah. we'll be short of time. Sure. Okay. So I'm providing uh, with an axial uh, CT scan uh, neck, face and neck region of a patient. Most uh, striking abnormality that is an abnormal uh, air content uh, area uh, that is uh, occupying the left uh, parapharyngeal region. Can you show me the axial to exact look for exact localization? Okay. So it's um, it's involving the uh, basically left para laryngeal para pharyngeal spaces with the resulting mass effect for adjacent vessels, and it's showing communication. I'm looking for the communication. Yeah, it's showing communication with the left valley chile. Um. Rest of the um, vessels are fine. No significant lymphadenopathy. Okay, on bottom images, there's enlarged right jugular vein. Ignore that. Okay, that's normal. So I'm suspecting some um, diverticula. Or well, maybe um, this is a laryngo seal. Yes. What type of laryngo seal would you call well, it? The shape is shape is very uh, irregular. Uh, so this is an. In what category of a laryngo seal would you place this? Yeah, it's so external to the, um, basically it's um, outside the, uh, the thyroid ligament. Uh, so, Dr. Ashwini, I think you should wrap up now and do the feedback. All right. We passed our time. Okay, okay. So I'll start from the first case. Yeah. This was a cortical-based tumor mm -hmm. with an intensely bright T2 signal with incomplete suppression and a typical flare rim sign. So this was a D -nate. Okay. Um, and um, your other differentials for this would include oligodendroglioma, but that would be cortical and subcortical, and it would be T2 heterogeneous, and calcification would commonly be there. The other differentials could be ganglioglioma, but that would be cyst with mural nodule. Again, calcification would be common there. And uh, PXA, there again, you would expect a lot of calcification. Um, some cortical malformations like FCD or cortical tubers also could be considered, but there, there would be loss of gray white matter junction, and this would be very indistinct. Um, moving on to the next case. Can we consider uh, the benign cysts in this uh, scenario? What like kind of neuroglial cyst or anything uh, like that? Um, that wouldn't have incomplete suppression. Mm -hmm. And a very well, this part. sign is very much specific for DNA. Yeah, yeah. And the T2 signal is extremely bright. Then going on to the next case, I think you did very well. There was a pineal, a pineal tumor and a supracellular tumor. 
and the pineal tumor had a central calcific focus wasn't exploding type it was an engulfing type of calcification with a supracellular mass is a geminoma but the most important thing here was the hydrocephalus which is decompensated so that would require immediate stenting although we saw that on the mr there was a stent so somewhere between the ct and the mr the stent came in okay um going on to the next case this was an avm intrapatent chimeral bleed with um here you said the bleeding would be very high but uh, that's not likely the case because the tumor is not very the avm is not very big and um, it's draining into the superficial system rather than the deep system but yes it's in the illiquid actually uh, thing is that scrolling is in your hand so yeah. i missed the findings while yeah. scrolling yeah so that it. was the basic reason uh, i get it and the feeder artery is coming from m2 like m3 m2 m2 yeah m2 m3 region and there's a fine fine draining vein um then going on to the last case this was a laryngocele the yeah, external variety is it external variety is a mixed mixed type both variety. the internal so in the external type one second i'll just show you the case it's lateral to the thyroid membrane it was going on to the lateral side and both the internal and the external components were dilated okay okay it's been just an external type the, there would just be a stump and then a dilated portion whereas okay. here both the internal and the external type is uh, both the internal and the external component is dilated so this is a mixed type of laryngocele so any cause of this laryngocele in this particular um, image i don't think any history was mentioned but generally you would expect it in a patient who plays an an instrument i'd say glass blower trumpet yeah, trumpet trumpet blowers yeah. so basically uh, i was expecting uh, some cns uh, kind of scenario so that's why i'm looking for some cause apparently <laughs> i saw a letting the scene that's why i didn't uh, utter a single word in this case <laughs> <laughs> okay i think uh, uh, these were the cases right yeah, okay. yeah thank yeah. you so much yeah, very nice you. cases Thank you, uh, Dr. Ashwini. The first case, somebody is asking, what was the final diagnosis? Just you can say it. Dnet. Uh, uh, will you stop uh, sharing the screen? Yeah. Okay. So the next candidate would be you, and Dr. Um, Maria would be the examiner. I have given you the remote mouse when you need to. Okay. So, thirty-five-year-old male patient presenting with sudden loss of consciousness, no hypertension, no seizures, no fever, no trauma. Uh, Dr. Maria, you are here. Yeah, I'm here. Okay, uh, just let me know which sequence I have to scroll and whatever. Okay. Can I have the control? Yeah, I have given you the control. Take it. I have. Okay. You have to click on the screen once and then scroll. I have no idea how to do this. I just you click on this speaking on the screen but... yeah you are yeah go ahead okay so i'm looking at the axial t2 images and okay this is scrolling way too fast i'm not able to control this are you using your mouse no uh, no okay i guess it's okay now all right so there is a lesion there is a relatively well defined t2 hyperintense lesion in the region of the basal ganglia um wherein i can see there are some t2 hyperintense areas within and um second I would want to have a look at another plane as well. Yeah, you can select any sequence which you need. I'm just having a look at the coronal.
Okay, so where this lesion is, can you specify the location? Um, I'm finding it really hard to scroll. Just very difficult. Okay. Okay, okay. So, <laughs> Dr. Uh, Sabah, do you have a mouse? Do you Dr. have a mouse? Sabah can scroll for you. No, I you. don't have a mouse. Okay, use the use the arrow buttons then. I can scroll for you, but it's not the same as you scrolling yourself. Mm, okay, okay. So try to use the mouse. Uh, try to use the arrows if you don't have a mouse. Okay, okay. that's right. And still, if you can't do it, I'll do it for you. No, this because is in the fine. exams. It will be you. Okay, right. Okay, so there is um, hydrocephalus that I can see, and this lesion is in the. Oops. It's really hard. Okay, Dr. Sabat, uh, yeah, I, I think, think you, you scroll it. You scroll okay, it. Okay, Dr. Ashwini, leave it. Tell me which which screen which fine. which one do you want to use, Dr. Ashwini? Uh -huh. Yeah, hello. With the uh -huh. mouse, then I can control it. Now tell me which one do you want to see? Um, you can show me the flare or um. There is no flare, I believe. Okay. Um, Let me show you DWI. Yeah, there is flare uh, in upper row. Please check. Yeah, okay. exhal flare is there. Yeah. Dr. Ashwini, you are not going there to touch is. the mouse. Otherwise, uh, I won't be able to scroll. Okay. No, no, I'm not touching. Okay, mouse. okay. Go ahead. Okay, so I can see that there is a hyper intense lesion in the. Um, the region of the in the region of the brain uh, basal ganglia it's in the parafalcine region um, or is it intraventricular there is some extension of it into the trigone as well so it could even be intraventricular on the coronal images i am localizing it as a uh, intraventricular lesion which is causing hydrocephalus on DWI images, it is hyper intense. I would want to correlate it with the ADC images. There is restriction, which is seen. Um, so this is a sagittal T2 image. Um, SWI has a lot of blooming in that area. So what do you think what it is? Okay, can you just go up one second? This is the MR and geogram images. There are So the ICA is um, Do you want me to show you some you, specific Can you show me the MR angiography image? MR angiography, which one? The coronal or this one? The axial. This one, okay. Yeah. Um, there are a lot of aneurysmal dilation seen in the um, MCA region and also in the terminal part of um, there are a lot of collaterals in that area. Mm -hmm. So, um, so um, which which uh, area you need to check further? Which area? Like in... aneurysmal area, aneurysm uh, dilatation of which part of the vessels? The it looks like a nidus of vessels. I can't be very sure. Okay, mm -hmm. so on on baseline sequences, uh -huh. what is that abnormality? What do you think? Um, I don't see any flow voids again. Can you just scroll through this again? Okay. So would you want to ask me any anything in the clinical presentation of the 
Yeah, can you? Um, okay. So, patient has an acute history of left sided weakness. Patient. Adult patient. Okay. Patient. Uh, Sudden history. Is there any history of trauma? No history of trauma. No history of trauma, no fever, you said. Okay. Yeah. I don't see a lot of blood vessels there. Um, okay. So after seeing the uh, GRE sequence, you said there is a lot of blooming. So what yes. does blooming signify? Um, calcification or it could be a hemorrhage. I mean, there could be calcification or vessels. Okay. So I'm thinking. So what do you think? What do you think? What I think it is? calcification maybe. After seeing this MR angiogram, what do you think? Um, I'm just a second. Um, so those can were. You, can you scroll through the uh, time of flight axial images, source images? No, not map image. Source. Yeah, yeah, this one. Yeah. Now please uh, focus on these images. What's going on with the vessels? Okay, so the posterior. How about the caliber of the ICA? It looks narrowed, and maybe those are a tuft mm -hmm. of vessels which are because of um, excellent. So on the so supraclinoid area, looks your mind. Uh, Moya Moya syndrome, lots of yes. collaterals. Moya Moya disease uh, syndrome, actually. Yeah, you need that. Okay, so what's the difference between Moya Moya disease and Moya Moya syndrome? Uh, Moya Moya disease is an idiopathic disorder wherein there is bilateral narrowing of supraclinoid ICA, mm -hmm. whereas uh, Moya Moya syndrome can be because of different vasoclusive phenomenon like NF1 or Down syndrome or um, hemoglobinopathies like cryoglobulinemia, sickle cell disease. Okay, so what would you do next in this patient? Um, I would, ref uh, since there is hydrocephalus and um, yeah, this was an acute onset, I would, um, this patient would require stenting for the hydrocephalus and this patient would require referral to the um, interventional radiology team and the neurosurgical team for before further. proceeding to uh, other, other specialties, anything with the radiology. I would want, want to do a DSA, a uh, DSA to see the collaterals. Okay, so we don't do DSA. We did a CT scan unenhanced. Okay, just to check about the status. Okay, so what are your findings here? Which is seen in the there's intraventricular hemorrhage and also hemorrhage in the basal ganglia region. Okay. So can you tell me the specific presentation of Moya Moya in children and in adults? Uh, Moya Moya in children would present with, um, I have no idea what the difference in presentation would be. Okay, no problem at all. Please proceed to the next case. Yeah. Congenital nasal lesion MRI is requested to rule out intracranial continuation. This is a child, female child. Can you show me the axial T2 images? Actually a coronal first. Can you just show me the coronal first? Um, so this, can you show me the T1 non-fat site image? So the lesion is, 
um, near the nasal septum and it's T1 iso intense, T2 hyper intense. Um, on contrast image, there is no significant enhancement. Um, there's no significant enhancement on contrast. Mm -hmm. Do you have a uh, diffusion restriction image? I mean, DWI ADC images? I think no, we don't have. Okay, can I compare this with the non-contrast enhanced T1? I just want to look for the enhancement. Okay, there is enhancement. This is the one without the contrast, and this is the one with contrast. Okay, not much of. Um, okay. So since this is an external uh, lesion, almost in the midline, my differentials here would be uh, epidermoid cyst or a uh, angular um, dermoid. Uh, um, okay. okay. So is it really connected intracranially? No, it's not intracranial. There's, it doesn't look like there is an intracranial connection. Okay, so based on signal intensities, what do you think what it is? Um, it is T2 hyper and T1 hypo intense. Mm -hmm. And T2, it's um, heterogeneous. So I'm thinking maybe an epidermoid. Could even be a sebaceous cyst anteriorly. So it uh, has no diffusion restriction. Okay, it has no diffusion restriction. Okay. Um, can you just show me the sagittal image? I want to rule out a cephalocele. So this is the mass and there is no herniation of the brain from what I can see. There is no herniation of the brain. Is there a herniation? Okay, do you think this uh, lesion mimicking the brain parenchyma? This is actually mimicking the brain parenchyma. So does this ring the bell about any it's lesion? It's an encephalocele. It could be a frontonasal encephalocele. I just want to see the continuation on sagittal. Yeah, this could be a frontonasal Do you recall the history of this patient? Um, a nasal mass wherein they were trying to rule out any intracranial extension. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this could be an encephalocele. Are you sure about encephalocele? Does encephalocele show? I just want, can I have the control? I'm just finding it so hard. Go yeah. ahead. So difficult. Out. Uh, okay. You are saying there is no intracranial connection. Is, is, is still it is an encephalocele? No, no, just one second. I want to see if look for carefully for any communication. Just a second. T2. Okay, what's your final call for this patient? Um, there isn't any communication from what I can see here. There's mm -hmm. no of the brain tissue. Although here, there, no, not really. How would we proceed? Mm, on the contrast images, also there is no enhancement, right? Not really, no enhancement. Oh no, actually it is. I think there is an intracranial communication. No, not really. Okay, so what would you do next? Um, I would want to correlate it with the CT images to see if there is any bony defect. No CT is available at the moment. Okay. Um, 
Okay, please proceed to the next case. No, Dr. Maria, we don't have time. You have to give feedback now. It's already- Can we, uh, can we, can we uh, get another case or uh, just a short case? I just want to uh, do three cases. I know, but, uh, but you see, it's already 9.40. Anyhow, which one? Oh, this yeah, one? Yeah, this, this one, this one. Okay, because mm -hmm. it's already 9.40. We have still four more. Okay, time. okay, I'm trying to uh, finish it. Okay, go ahead. Okay, please proceed. Okay, so there's a VP shunt, which is seen in C2 and uh, mm -hmm. bilaterally dilated lateral ventricles with cavum septum pellucidum. Okay, please scroll it. So would you think this shunt is doing its job? No, it's not. Uh, it's a malpositioned shunt. It's so what would you do next? The, this patient would require repositioning of the shunt. Okay, so before referring to neural surgery, would you go for any other investigation just to evaluate what's problem with this shunt? Um, I have no idea about that. Anything with radiological expect? What will we do after CT, Dr. Ashwini? MRI. MRI. So MRI is of no help here. So we can do this shunt series. Please proceed to the next. Okay. Okay. Uh, show, show me the first frontal view. Frontal view. Show her first frontal view. Yeah. But Ashwini, this Are you is going star? to appreciate anything else? Anything in this x ray? Um, there is a termination of the shunt over here. Yes. 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 Excellent. It's a fractured shunt. And all of the coils are seen in the peritoneal cavity on the Excellent. abdominal Excellent. So what's your final call? It's a fractured VP shunt, which yes. requires, and which requires Excellent. repositioning. Yes. Excellent. So this was a case. Uh, so I'm giving you a feedback on this case first. Yeah. So this was a case of the fractured uh, VP shunt. There is co recoiling of the shunt within the abdominal cavity. Most common fracture is noted along the right lateral aspect of the neck which is very well evident on this image. Yeah, this is a fracture. Sometime it may be kinked or it may be torn. So we need to look for that before proceeding to the neurosurgical T. Okay, okay. please go back. Actually, uh, this case, uh, the history was very much classical. The, there is a congenital lesion. So your thinking was good and uh, you are on Actually, the right I'm path. I'm not able to find, I mean, I'm not able to scroll yeah. and look, in, look at anything very clearly. Uh, no problem, no problem. We all are learning, basically. So this, uh, in this case, uh, I gave you hint about the uh, brain parent chyma. Does it, does this uh, lesion matches with the signals of the brain parent chyma? And you agreed about that. Then you uh, proceed for the uh, encephalocele. Basically, this was a nasal glioma. It, it is showing similar signal characteristic as that of the normal brain cortex. Okay. And it, it is showing same kind of enhancement as that of normal brain, brain parenchyma. And it's basically a heterotopia. It's a misnomer. It's not okay. a glioma. It's a misnomer. So basically, it's a heterotopia. And uh, before proceeding for the uh, surgery, for surgical road mapping, uh, usually MR is to be undertaking uh, to rule out any intracranial uh, connections. Usually these kind of cases uh, showing intracranial connection in a very minor uh, percentages, like one to 15% of cases may show connection to brain by a small stroke. So this was a benign lesion anyway. Okay. So your differential would be the fine uh, that uh, epidermoid and dermoid, considering the fact these are the midline in the structure. And in cephalocele, we uh, need to evaluate about for the defect, bony defect, uh, and uh, there must be a connection with the brain parenchyma. Right. So going to the, uh, coming back to this uh, previous case. So as uh, I mentioned that there is no history of trauma infection. All, uh, so this was an area of bleed. It was showing blooming uh, on the susceptibility and on concomitant MR angiogram, 
there was significant attenuation of the bilateral uh, supraclinoid part of the ICA, with multiple collaterals uh, in this region. And uh, in addition to that, uh, there is attenuated caliber of the right PCA, left MCA, M1, M2, and ACA branches as well. So whole of the anterior part of the circle of Willis uh, is attenuated. So this was a Moya Moya uh, syndrome with uh, right thalamic bleed. So here I ask you about the clinical manifestation of the children and adult. So it varies between two. In children, usually it presents with a stroke and encephalomalacic changes, while in adult, it usually present with the hemorrhage. So this was a classical case of adult presentation that is thalamic bleed with Moya Moya syndrome. And you rightly said about the difference between the Moya Moya disease and the syndrome. Moya Moya disease is idiopathic and Moya Moya syndrome usually carries uh, some underlying cause like vasculitis, atherosclerosis, or phacomatosis. So very well done. Uh, all about these three cases. So you do. Thank you very much. Uh, excellent cases and uh, very well done, Dr. Ashwini. Uh, uh -huh. The cases were tough. Yeah. And the fact that you kept talking is important, right? And hot seat is totally different. So yeah. thank you so yeah. much, both of you, Dr. Ashwini and Dr. Maria. Next uh, group of volunteers is Dr. Asad and Dr. Iman. Dr. Asad, if you would please share your screen and uh, Dr. Iman would be your hot seat volunteer. At 13 okay. minutes, I would let you know and we would make that last case, okay? Okay. Dr. Iman, are you ready? Yes. Okay, you can start now. This uh, 60 years old male patient uh, with symptoms start three uh, days ago with difficulty of finding words, decreased consciousness and uh, vertical gaze pulsing. No uh, lateralization, no headache. So you want me to scroll the images for you? You are the one now scrolling. Okay, I will scroll it for you. I don't. Okay, no problem. This you is can uh, just yes. tell me where to stop. Okay, this is uh, uh, axial and uh, brain. Uh, it uh, shows the uh, area of uh, hypodensity affecting the left side uh, thalamus. Uh, and uh, and uh, also uh, bilateral uh, uh, mammillary body, I think. Sorry? Also I think bilateral mammillary body. Okay. Uh, uh, no uh, obvious uh, uh, abnormality within uh, the brain cortex and white white matter, uh, periventricular white matter. Uh, no hydrocephalus uh, seen. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, the gross abnormalities uh, uh, bilateral mammillary body uh, hypo. Uh, attenuation. Uh, this uh, findings could be uh, due to um, um, uh, some uh, me uh, metabolic uh, um, disease. Okay. Any other differential? Uh, it uh, could be due to uh, infarction and mm -hmm. uh, uh, in uh, the uh, Posterior thalamostrate uh, artery. Thalamostrate artery. Okay. Sorry, which artery? Uh, it's a thalamo, a subthalamic paramedian artery. Okay, what would you like to do next? Uh, if uh, uh, if it's, uh, it's okay for uh, MRI and uh, diffusion noted image uh, to see the this area of uh, function as a restricted area. Yes, uh, this is uh, diffusion noted images. It appears hyper intense. Uh, usually, I correlate with ADC map to check if it's uh, truly restrict restricted. We don't have ADC. Okay, so it's present an acute uh, infarction in uh, 
this region by okay. bilateral thalamai. Uh, I immediately uh, conveyed the finding uh, to the referring uh, physician. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, maybe uh, MRA, MRA is an advice for uh, uh, better evaluation of uh, the uh, territory of uh, the artery. Okay. So uh, do you think this is lenticulose triate branches of uh, which artery? Middle cerebral? No, uh, uh, not the, it's a part, branch of basilar artery, pontine basilar. artery. Okay. Yes. Okay. This is a one year male uh, with one year, uh, with presented with a irritability, a large head, and developmental delay. Uh, this is axial uh, CT scan uh, of uh, the one year old uh, patient uh, shows uh, relatively hyperdense lesion at the foramen of uh, Monero. It's causing uh, significant obstructing hydrocephalus with manifests by dilatation of uh, the lateral and the third uh, ventricle. Um, there is a foci of uh, calcification seen. Mm -hmm. um, um, in this age uh, uh, group, uh, this could uh, due to a craniopharyngioma, uh, mm -hmm. which causing a significant obstructive hydrocephalus. Uh, usually, I correlate with sagittal to further localize this lesion and uh, uh, convey the data to the patient and advise for a shunt uh, to relieve uh, the hydrocephalus. So um, we, we yes, on, on, go for the post-contrast images. Yes, post-contrast, it uh, shows evid enhancement. Uh, and uh, children, is, uh, uh, it's, be, it's behave like this. There is strong enhancement on uh, uh, of a craniopharyngioma of the childhood. Sorry, craniopharyngioma. Uh, uh, on uh, sagittal, uh, it uh, seems to be uh, at the position of uh, uh, vein of gallon, and uh, the in intense enhancement is goes with the vascular lesion that uh, vein vein of uh, gallon uh, aneurysm, okay. uh, and it's also it's a surgical uh, emergency. And uh, I should uh, inform the referring physician because it's large size and causing also obstructive hydrocephalus. Uh, anything particular uh, which is in favor of vein of gallon malformation on these images, which would, you would like to comment? Uh, first, position-wise. Position, uh, other than position? Uh, and the avidly enhancing uh, mm -hmm. vascular uh, lesion. Uh, okay. And I think uh, so the uh, compression uh, with the dilatation of uh, uh, dural sinuses. What for the dural sinuses? Uh, it's, uh, I think it's a uh, drain in, uh, to the uh, uh, transverse sinus. It's showing communication with the venous sinuses. This is what you want to show, want to say? Yes. Uh, which sinus? Straight sinus. Straight sinus, okay. So what is your next management step? It's, uh, so it should be a, a, a neuro intervention uh, uh, informed and uh, uh, yani urgently. Yeah. Okay. For uh, the stenting of aneurysm and uh, the uh, shunting for uh, the uh, hydrocephalus. This is a, a 55 years old female with the four month history of rapid functional and cognitive decline 
Initial symptoms were depression and sleep disturbance. She then developed a myoclonic jerk and ataxia. This is a uh, axial uh, T1 weighted uh, images MRI. Uh, with the uh, axial T2 weighted, uh, I go through the images. Uh, snow obvious uh, abnormality detected on uh, flare images. There is some periventricular uh, hyper intensities mm -hmm. and uh, um, bilateral almost yani, symmetrical and uh, also the hyper intensity affecting both codate uh, and uh, to a lesser extent the lentiform nucleus mm -hmm. um, on diffusion uh, it shows uh, restriction uh, diffusion mm -hmm. affecting the basal ganglion uh, the both in nuclei uh, so uh, on uh, some susceptibility artifact blooming also okay. uh, noted. Uh, so it's, uh, it could uh, be so what is uh, your as differential as a hyper intensity on T1 and the restriction diffusion and some uh, uh, blooming artifact. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's caused with the Crotsfield Jacob syndrome. Uh, and considering also patient's age okay. and history. So what is your next management step? Neurosurgical, neuro, uh, yeah, neurological referral mm -hmm. for uh, the patient. Mm. Right, eyelid swelling and pain uh, in a 70 years old female. This is axial and enhanced brain CT scan of a 70 years old uh, female with the right eyelid swelling. Um, <coughs> yes, it, uh, at uh, the right uh, sided uh, epicanthus, so there is a uh, uh, hypotenuated. Uh, uh, re, uh, area uh, with the extension to the uh, eyelid on the right side. Mm -hmm. um, this uh, uh, otherwise the brain brain cameras looks normal, so it's uh, localized uh, to the uh, uh, median. Uh, uh, superior medial aspect of the orbit with extension to the uh, superior uh, eyelid. Uh, there is any post contrast image? No. Okay, and the bone window to show mm -hmm. to see if there is any bony defect. Mm -hmm. uh, this uh, uh, on bone window, uh, there is opacification of uh, the frontal sinus bilaterally more on the right side with expansion. Mm -hmm. So uh, consists uh, with the uh, uh, mucosyl. Okay. Uh, with the, I don't know what secondary inflammatory changes that extend to uh, causing swelling and inflammatory changes to the eyelid of the patient. Uh, the, a site of uh, complaint. Uh, usually, uh, I ask for contrast exam to see any uh, intracranial extension uh, for the lesion, uh, if there is any uh, subdural collection. So we had a MRI. 
Okay, on uh, this summarize, uh, uh, visualize uh, the uh, expanded uh, sinuses with the... Um, Which sequence would you like me to have a look? If diffusion available, all these areas was uh, restriction diffusion. Mm -hmm. uh, this also could, uh, as a differential, uh, represent uh, uh, mm -hmm. epidermoid cyst in this area as a diffusion restricted image, and uh, still uh, uh, mucosyl. Uh, in the first uh, diagnosis, I, I there, there is any post contrast image. Uh, no, sorry. Okay. Um, this uh, image. It says post. -contrast. I think. And this thing, this is this is post contrast. Go ahead. Okay. This is uh, like cystic lesion with the rim enhancement, no obvious uh, intracranial extension. So it's infected uh, mucosyl. Uh, I think without uh, extension to the uh, uh, brain, but uh, I should further characterize the orbit uh, if uh, there is uh, some uh, extension. Mm -hmm. Uh, what do you say? Uh, I think it's uh, yani in close intimate with the uh, right uh, uh, superior rectus muscle, but no obvious uh, intraocular uh, extension. There is some uh, limited uh, by, uh, I think, fat. There is still uh, preserved between the, uh, the uh, this is infected uh, mucosyl and the, the uh, right. Uh, Any specific diagnosis which uh, you want to make to sum up on these findings? Abscess, uh, infected mucosyl. Abscess. Yes. Okay, Dr. Asad, now you'll have to start with the feedback. The time is up. Thank you. Thank you. So yeah, for the first one. Yes. So uh, you did well. You picked up the abnormalities, bilateral thalamic region in Fox, and uh, which were I did not show you this uh, mm. angiogram perfectly. And then you picked it up on the MRI, which is showing T uh, two and diffusion restriction with flare and T2 hyper intensities. So uh, uh, basically this is a case of, uh, you know, RT of Pachiron infarct, which is uh, a P1, which is an uncommon anatomical variant, uh, which uh, arises from uh, P1 and it, it uh, splice the medial thalami. Uh, and then again, uh, one of the differential include deep venous sin sinus thrombosis and mm. uh, basilar's top of the basilar syndrome, as you mentioned. Mm. Okay. And for this one, uh, you did it right in the end, you picked up abnormality and you mentioned uh, well, and you described it and uh, it is showing basically communication with uh, uh, a state sinus and yeah, that's why it is a vein of Callan malformation, and it, which is in this uh, particular age and also the location. Mm, yes. Yeah. And yeah, for this one, you did very good. You close. asked me what's the criteria or something that guide me to as a vein of Callan. Uh, you ask me like this. Uh, I don't no, know. No, no. Uh, I mean. Uh, it was showing communication with uh, okay. uh, one of the training veins, uh, including the internal cerebral veins and one of the venous sinuses. That is the thing. So you had to mention that and you did, you did pick up uh, and you did mentioned that it is showing communication with the state science. 
So yeah, for this one, you did good. You picked up the abnormalities and yeah, and you, uh, as you said, that these abnormalities uh, are consistent with uh, CJD or close field checkup disease in the right. Yeah. I have a question. Uh, how can we differentiate uh, this uh, from uh, metabolic cause or? Uh... Yeah, it can be, uh, it is, uh, I mean, uh, uh, history is important as it, it was uh, the patient uh, clinical presentation they uh, have, uh, I mean, these, uh, uh, sometimes they have depressions and sometimes uh, as was mentioned in the clinical presentation that the patient uh, is going through Depression. some cognitive decline mm. and then myotonic jerks and ataxia. So, uh, but uh, again, uh, one of the differential uh, include uh, mitochondrial. And you asked me about the management? So we can we can refer it to the neurology and then probably uh, MDT discussion as well. Okay. Okay, and uh, what else was there? Uh, yes, this one. Yeah. So this one, uh, you picked up the abnormality and you described it on MRI. It is showing uh, enhancement on T1, and basically it is a part part puffy tumor, which we call it, uh, you know, uh, sinus expansion with yes. specification and bony erosions. And uh, it was showing in torpedal extension and right sided frontal mucosal. Yeah? Yes. Okay. Uh, it's, yeah, I mean, it's only that uh, I, I, I think the pot puffy is uh, uh, sinusitis complicated by uh, some uh, subdural collection, something like this. We call yeah, it. Yeah. Ah, uh, this case, there is. Uh, I, I think. Yeah. So it, it it is a it is it is an abscess and it is in the subperiosteal region of the right mm. eye. So that's why. So mm. uh, it is showing restricted diffusion as well as. Uh, uh, yeah, subgallial so, extension. I think it's called. Yeah. That's yeah. Why. Uh. So that's why it is uh, characterized as spot or spotty. So so. Okay. okay. Yes, yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank thank you, you very much, Dr. Asad. Very good cases, Dr. Iman. Very well done. Now you can share the screen for you with your playlist, and Dr. Asad would be the hot seat. Okay. Uh, is, can you stop sharing, Dr. Uh -huh, okay. He already has. You okay. Can share. Yeah. Now it's okay. Yeah, it's third. fine. Yes. This okay, is so 80 year old day. female, sudden onset headache, disorientation, confusion, no previous imaging. Yeah. Uh, you, you, you want to have a control, doctor? Or? Uh, can I ask for the contrast? Yeah. Uh, control? Yes, no problem. Uh, sorry, where yes. to? I think it's control with you, doctor. Control is with me. Yes, okay. you are now. That's good. Click on the screen once and it should be fine. Yes. So this is the non-contrast uh, enhanced axial CT image of eight-year-old. It's a what? Contrast or non-contrast? Non-contrast. Non okay. So there, uh, there is extensive uh, subarachnoid hemorrhages. I can see there is uh, hyper... Uh, density within uh, yes the cerebral systems and also uh, there is some uh, evidence of uh, possible uh, temporal horn uh, dilatation uh, as well bilaterally. So okay. uh, this is an extensive subarachnoid uh, hemorrhage, and it needs to be urgently communicated to the different. Uh, team for, for the management. And I'm looking for any evidence of uh, aneurysm, which might have yes. ruptured, but uh, I don't see it. So uh, for the evaluation with CT angiogram or MRI angiogram, uh, radiologically would be more appropriate if we want to. Yes. Uh, there is any uh, intraventricular extension? Uh, sorry, uh, let me have a look. 
So yeah, in the posterior horn of the right lateral ventricle, I think there is some hyper attenuation. So yes. other than that, I don't see any evidence of uh, intraventricular extension. Yes. Uh, what's the most common cause of uh, subarachnoid hemorrhage? Uh, in adults, it is aneurysmal, most common, yes. uh, and which needs to be ruled out with CT or MRI angiograms. Okay. Uh, what's the typical presentation you expect from this patient? Uh, typical presentation is with a headache, which is a thunderclap headache. Yes, exactly. Uh, and yeah. So, uh, uh, if uh, you pre you present with a patient like uh, this uh, presentation, thunderclap headache, and the scan was normal, is this uh, uh, is this does rule out uh, subarachnoid hemorrhage? No, it does not entirely exclude uh, subarachnoid hemorrhage. So, what you expect to do to be more uh, for diagnosis for the patient? For I think we can do uh, LP uh, in this patient or any patient. And in other scenario. In other scenario. Yes. So in, in that scenario, we can proceed with the uh, lumbar puncture yes. uh, uh, exactly. to rule out xanthochromia or the blood within the... Yes. yes, good. And what's the most common complication of subarachnoid hemorrhage? Uh, most common... Uh, Complication uh, is... And it's a little bit obvious here, Yani, and this patient. As you say, there is some temporal lobe prominent, temporal horn. So yeah, hydrocephalus is... Yes. One, uh, yeah, hydrocephalus is uh, one of the complications. So okay. temporal lobe are uh, prominent, so it is yes, early yeah. hydrocephalus. Yes. Can we go to next case? So 30 year old male with acute onset of seizures, recently unwell. Yes. So this is a CT. Non contrasted real images of 30 year old who is recently unwell. So the striking abnormality I can see is in the right side. Uh, Yes. Abnormal hypoattenuation area is seen within the right cortical or subcortical region and predominantly within the right gray matter. And there is, it is showing some thickening around uh, possible. So and I can see there is, I'm looking for any mass effect. Yes. And there is. There is, okay. There is mass effect. And also I can see there is, the posterior horn are relatively prominent. Uh, mm. Ignore the left one because there is a previous uh, insult on uh, the left occipital region. Okay. So uh, I have a previous insult with the anterior yes. or posterior dilatation of yes. the left sided posterior. So uh, coming back to this abnormality, I think uh, they uh, strike me. I, uh, one of the differential can be uh, intraparenchymal abscess, uh, okay. which is my top uh, differential, or then it can be a metastatic deposit uh, in the clinical okay. scenario if the patient is a known case. Yes. Uh, so to take this further, I, I need a uh, post contrast. Uh, scan okay. if the patient is already within. Uh, yes, continue. Uh, uh, press on continue. Okay, I have no problem. Okay, this is post contrast. So, so post contrast uh, scan is showing ring enhancement of this yes. uh, abnormality with the surrounding edema. And so uh, this is consistent with, uh, again, uh, suspicious for intrapancan abscess. Okay. I would like to uh, confirm it with MRI. Uh, okay. A diffusion restriction. Sequence, okay, nice. So yeah. to look for diffusion restriction on the, uh, on this. And the, what's about next step? So uh, there is a uh, restricted diffusion. So it needs okay. to be uh, urgently communicated to the uh, neurosurgical team. 
yes, for the running. Okay, next case, please. Neurology. So, 60 year old female with headaches and expressive aphasia, left sided facial droop, rule out cerebrovascular accident, history of renal transplant, polycystic kidney disease. Yes. Okay. So, these are the non contrast enhanced images of brain presenting. Patient has presented with facial tubes. Okay. So the striking abnormality I can see is in the left uh, front of tidal cortex, where I can appreciate uh, focal lesions associated, which are multiple, yes. and uh, which are with associated uh, edema. And no midline shift, no evidence of hydrocephalus. I can appreciate another lesion in the right frontal uh, cortex as well. So can he have, uh, go for the post contrast? Yes, no problem. So post contrast arterial phase images of the brain parenchyma. So again, I can see these areas are showing uh, ring enhancement. Yes. Uh, these are multiple mm -hmm. uh, in right frontal and left frontal tidal yes. cortex. So my top differential in this case can be uh, metastatic deposits. Okay. Although abscess cannot be entirely excluded. Okay. Uh, uh, there, is a, there is a history of a renal transplant for this patient. Can this give you some clue? So renal transplant patient, uh, can this be lymphoma? Uh, okay. Lymphomatous uh, proliferative disease. Uh, okay. Can you differentiate between both? Uh, Primary CNS, I mean, no former and the uh, uh, post. These are multiple, and uh, okay. so these uh, primary CNS lymphoma is usually solitary lesion. Yes, uh, but in, uh, uh, in renal transplantation, it can it can be multiple. Okay. So yeah, further evaluation with MRI with contrast uh, and uh, discussion at neurology MDT. Okay. So, for this one. Uh, yes, you can go for the next case. Next the case. Next. Oh. So sudden onset headache in 60 year old male. Yes. So these are the non contrast axial images, striking abnormality. I can see there is evidence of pneumocephalus. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry. Uh, there are uh, probably fat Hello. attenuation lesions. Sorry. Hello. Can you hear me? Dr. Iman, we can hear Dr. Asad clearly. Are you here, Dr. Iman, with us? Uh, uh, now, now it's okay, maybe. Yeah, it's, it's fine. fine. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay, the, so this really, I didn't hear the, you because some interruptions uh, happened. So uh, you mentioned there is hypo uh, density, okay? Yeah, so there are multiple areas of hypo attenuation uh, okay. uh, I I suspect these are fat attenuation. Uh, I would like to measure the density. And, yes. Uh, it's a fat uh, density. Okay. So this these are in the the larger lesion is in the uh, left frontal virus. Okay. And it is uh, I suspect it is a dermide which has ruptured and. Uh, which is showing uh, multiple lesions uh, uh, throughout the rest of the brain parenchyma. So this is a ruptured termite, yeah. and I don't see any evidence of uh, hydrocephalus, and mm -hmm. rest of the brain parenchyma, no evidence of intracranial bleed. So uh, oh, yes. this um, needs to... What's the differential? You say this uh, dermoid. So der dermoid, uh, and it can be epidermide as well. Okay. 
Uh, However, what's the signal expect from epidermoid? So epidermoid, uh, uh, I think um, it, it will not show you fat attenuation on- uh, Yes, exactly, CT. CSF signal, okay. Yeah, it will, it will be of CSF signal. And so a fat attenuation- the diffusion, diffusion, what's behave the dermoid and epidermoid? So epidermoid uh, will show a diffusion restriction on MRI. Uh, we can confirm that on okay. MRI. And uh, uh, this is, uh, I think, a ruptured dermoid. And yes. it, ne it needs to be communicated urgently to the uh, neurosurgical team. Yes. What's expected uh, due to rupture uh, that the patient present? Usually dermoids uh, are rupture is asymptomatic or yani, mild symptom, uh, unless it's ruptured. Uh, if, if it's ruptured, as in this case, what's expected the patient come with? Uh, headaches? Uh, what do you think as the complication of rupture? It's cause what? Hydrocephalus is a most common complication. Sorry? Uh, it's on discussion. We have uh, time for another case or? Uh, if it's a short one, then otherwise we can start with the feedback um, because the time is up. I think we can start with the feedback. You, you okay, were no able problem. to cover good number of cases. Thank you. Yes, okay. Yes, thank you. Uh, you did well for this case, is the uh, rupture dermosis at this, uh, flu, uh, sorry, fat attenuation mm -hmm. uh, lesion. And uh, you mentioned that there are also multiple hypoattenuated uh, area. Yeah. So it's the rupture epidermoid. We expect that uh, the, uh, it's called chemical meningitis. Okay. So okay. the patient come with seizure or sometimes even infarction. Right. And uh, right. the most chemical common, meningitis. Yeah. Yes, chemical. It's aseptic meningitis. Yes, uh, most, yeah. yes, most common location is uh, suprasillar system. Suprasillar. Yes, and differential diagnosis, yes, it's uh, either lipoma or epidermoid. However, epidermoid, as you mentioned, a CSF signal and uh, restricted diffusion. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we put uh, intracranial teratoma and also they put a cranial pharyngioma as a diagnostic. Usually, yani, uh, management, uh, uh, when symptomatic, uh, surgical excision, Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the recurrence is uh, rare if uh, it's completely uh, resected. Okay, okay. We did well for uh, this case. Uh, the previous one, mm -hmm. this one with the, the clue, it's uh, the renal uh, uh, transplant. transplant. Okay. Yes. So, and uh, you pick up the, mm -hmm. the all lesions or multiple uh, mm -hmm. with the almost yani, uh, hyper and hypoattenuated uh, yeah, areas yeah. with vasogenic uh, edema. Yeah. Uh, this is a, a post-transplant lymphoproliferative disorder. Okay. Uh, okay. And uh, we should differentiate from primary CNS lymphoma. Uh, mm -hmm. This lesion stake, uh, as you see, it's multiple yeah. lobar and yeah. uh, it's heterogeneous yeah. uh, with the uh, ring enhancement on uh, post-contrast. Okay. As we expect from primary CNS lymphoma, the lesion is central, periventricular, mm -hmm. uh, solid, as you yeah. mentioned, and uh, in immune competent, it shows uh, homogeneous enhancement. Okay. okay. Uh, but it's uh, differential for each uh, uh, other. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, time between transplant and development of uh, uh, post transplant lymphoproliferative disorders is uh, a wide range. Yeah. Uh, from one month to seven uh, years, but uh, mostly within one year. But if there is late uh, presentation, yani after one year, we expect yeah. more aggressive lesion and uh, poor prognosis. Mm -hmm. uh, we can uh, go to also previous. Okay. Uh, this is, uh, uh, you, do, you did well for uh, this uh, case. Um, you pick up the finding and uh, you also mentioned uh, how it's behaved on uh, MRI and uh, you also uh, uh, give uh, good management as a neurosurgical referral for drainage and also for uh, anti uh, 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 antibiotic. Yeah. Uh, we should, in this case, uh, follow up the case with the diffusion uh, to see uh, if there is any uh, response to the treatment and if it's good the treatment why diffusion 
usually okay. we see less restriction so mm -hmm. it means a good response to good therapy. response to treatment yes yeah with diffusion uh, rate okay yes uh, good. thank you this case uh, yes it's uh, uh, subarachnoid humerus is very common uh, in examination, but usually they uh, give you very subtle uh, right. one. Right. Yes, and uh, you should also mention if there is any intraventricular extension. Uh, I see some examiner ask about uh, if you know any staging uh, uh, system for okay. uh, subarachnoid hemorrhage, and uh, we have a clinical uh, uh, staging system and uh, a radiological CT uh, grading system. Okay. Uh, it's called uh, modified uh, Fisher uh, CT grading. Mm -hmm. I think we can yani, uh, return back uh, to this uh, system because uh, it's expected that there is a vasospasm mm -hmm. uh, uh, from uh, the uh, subarachnoid hemorrhage that uh, occur one to three weeks. Uh, yeah. So uh, by this uh, uh, grading system, we can give the severity for the patient uh, uh, to uh, our expectation, uh, how a vasospasm percentage occur. And it's very important sometimes because uh, we can lose the patient uh, due to this. So we can uh, use this uh, grading uh, system. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, as uh, we mentioned, uh, there is some percentage is important for this, like 90% hydrocephalus. Usually, uh, only 10% require permanent uh, CSF diversion, not all the patient. Yeah. And uh, uh, also, it's, uh, have 50% uh, mortality and 20% uh, re-bleeding in the first two weeks. Uh, sometimes and most common cause, sorry, is, is uh, aneurysm. aneurysm. Yes, yeah. as you mentioned. Um, uh, we, we can recheck that. I think somebody mentioned that uh, trauma is the most common cause, but we'll recheck for the literature again. But aneurysm, of course, is a cause. For, for me, I checked that the most common cause of uh, subarachnoid hemorrhage is aneurysm. I think trauma is common next. Spontaneous aneurysm, uh, aneurysm rupture. rupture is most common, yes. I think. Yes. yes. Okay, there is yeah. a question from the audience that is there aneurysm in the left thalamic region? Is there? Uh, this patient, they do follow up uh, CT. Uh, unfortunately, they didn't do any angiography yeah. okay. for this. But uh, after uh, uh, any follow up, they saw almost uh, resolution of uh, the subarachnoid uh, hemorrhage, uh, unless uh, in the anterior interhemispheric fissure. So they mm -hmm. expected right. that uh, it's uh, mainly the anterior communicating artery. Okay. Uh, aneurysm, as we mentioned, it's uh, uh, by location we can determine the. Uh, aneurysm of uh, which artery okay. and you did well uh, because it's important uh, i told you if the scan uh, normal is this uh, exclude uh, subarachnoid hemorrhage you said no yes if a typical history of thunder clap we can do angio or lumbar puncture for uh, xanthochromia usually 12 hours uh, done the exam after the onset of uh, symptom so yeah so ct angiogram is more appropriate yes, uh, or a lumbar puncture yes okay. Yeah, okay. sure. Thank you so much, Dr. Thank, Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you for all. Okay. So, Dr. Riman, if you would stop sharing the screen, then I would start sharing my screen. And Dr. Nuran, can you unmute yourself? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, do you want a control? Of the mouse? No, you can uh, proceed with it. I will okay. be so happy. Your time okay. starts now. Okay. So uh, this is 45 years old female with a withheld history. Yes, uh, I can see there is, a, a, I have been provided with some se uh, selected images of CT, non-enhanced uh, images of the orbit. Uh, looking to the orbit, I can see there is enlargement of the uh, uh, extraorbital muscles. Uh, specifically, uh, when I look to them in the uh, place uh, the coronal images, so uh, uh, it is in, in the pattern of I am slow, inferior, medial, and superior, and it is bilaterally and this it is a, uh, a diffusely swollen uh, muscles. So this is uh, keeping with the thyroid uh, ophthalmopathy. Uh, and of course, here it is more uh, evident that uh, the musculotendinous uh, 
connection is not affected only the muscle belly. So this all keeping with uh, thyroid ophthalmopathy. So what is the what is the importance of the tendinous insertion? What is the DD here? Yeah, uh, here uh, there is uh, the differential diagnosis. Here is uh, 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 pseudo. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yes. Pseudo uh, uh, orbital uh, uh, tumor? disease. Yeah, yeah. Tumor. Yeah. Pseudo orbital tumor where it can be it affect all the tendon and the muscle and it could be unilateral or bilateral asymmetrical. However, here it will be bilateral symmetrical involvement. Okay, what will be your next step? Well, uh, I can proceed uh, to, to see, uh, uh, well, because it is thyroid arthropathy, so I can go uh, to see the thyroid ultrasound or uh, thyroid images if possible. Okay, we'll come here later. Next case. Okay. Well, uh, months of daily headache, worse with the stooping and the transient visual symptoms, 35 years old female. Here I'm, I've been provided with selected images of axial non-contrast uh, uh, CT of the brain. Uh, yes, uh, I'm trying to look to uh, ventricles, uh, midline and surrounded uh, uh, hemispheres i yes i'm trying to look to any visible thing well i right so now i couldn't check anything <laughs> um, yeah yeah i know do you see anything here on this specific slice well mm -hmm. uh, Maybe here in the the fourth ventricle looks smaller than normal, and the um, uh, okay. What else? The pontine maybe it is bulky more. Big. I'm uh, not sure. Degrading no. artifacts. Okay. Leave the posterior fossa. Anything else? Uh, well, uh, this sphenoid sinus maybe a decrease in the aeration of the sphenoid. No, it is good. Uh, what is behind the sphenoid sinus? Uh, the uh, <laughs> cella torsica and... Uh, mm -hmm. so anything odd about this? Well, uh, it is enlarged cella. It is enlarged yes. and looks empty. Uh, as exactly. Is, so what, yeah. is, what is the finding here? It is empty cella. These are the findings of empty cella. It could lead to headache uh, symptoms. Yeah. So I need uh, an MRI for this uh, lady to be Excellent. sure of the findings. Which one do you need first? Which? Uh, well, uh, flare images if possible, because in the sagittal, it is obvious that there is empty cella. Okay. Okay. I'll scroll quadricranially. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, there is empty cella and the, uh, yeah. The uh, optic uh, nerves look tortuous uh, and uh, uh, there is also some flattening of the uh, base of the optic nerves at the junction with the sclera. And uh, the ventricles are, uh, uh, I, I think it is looks smaller or maybe uh, slit-like uh, okay. uh, in, uh, uh, in uh, uh, shape. All these connections with the uh, clinical picture of headache in this lady, uh, it gives me the impression of uh, uh, intracranial uh, hypotension, hypotension. This is, this is our downfall always. So okay. hypo yeah. or hyper? No, no, no. Let me think about it. Uh, and yes. do you need anything else? Any specific series, any specific se sequence to make the diagnosis? Uh, do you want? Uh, mm -hmm. I need... Um, I think this is uh, hypertension because, yeah, it is hypertension. Uh, wh which series I should need? Um, I'm just thinking about it. I no problem. Uh -huh. uh, you have given me all the right findings. Just yeah. one more thing for which you need a specific sequence. The interpedicular uh, space, maybe it is, or... Uh, Let me be a kind examiner. Go ahead. Okay, but so what this am is, I giving you? 
uh, venogram, MR venogram, just to see if there is any associated uh, uh, thrombosis maybe in the, uh, um, I think there is a, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the left transverse sinus is not uh, well uh, opacified. I think there is some filling defect in it, maybe thrombosis in the transverse. Uh, uh, Take no? my word for it, it's hypoplastic, okay? okay anything, wrong hypoplastic. With that, anything wrong with the right transverse sinus, which would fit in with your differential, which you are giving, you are going well? Yeah, with the right transverse sinus. Uh, it, uh, the right transverse. How's uh, the caliber? It is increased, so, and... Uh, uh, this is normal, right? This is yeah. expected. Yes. And uh, it is, uh, yes, it is uh, getting smaller uh, when it okay. goes up. So okay. I think there is something there. Maybe it mm -hmm. is uh, thrombosis in the sinus, which... Uh, or stenosis. Uh, or stenosis, yeah, or stenosis, which mm. uh, uh, causes uh, maybe uh, increased... So what is your final, what is your final diagnosis? I think diagnosis? This, is, uh, uh, this is intracranial hypertension. And, Hyper? Uh, Hyper, hyper oh, okay. excellent. Yes. Okay. Yes. Let's this go to is the next case. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. This is presented uh, with uh, uh, presented for the evaluation of the complaints of nausea, vomiting, and headache. Twenty-five years old, male. Oh, sorry. Okay. Okay, I've been provided with selected images of uh, MRI. This is T1 uh, weighted image. Uh, can we go back to the yes? Um, yeah, I can see uh, some rounded, uh, well-defined lesion at uh, near to the, the yeah, supraclinoid okay. process. Yes, in the supraclinoid process, which is uh, hyper intense on T1 weighted images, similar to the intensity of the fat. Um, Yes, there is also the same signal intensity within the fissure, sylvian fissure, mm -hmm. uh, maybe due to fat or lipoma. Uh, can I see the flare sequences, please? Sure. Yeah, there is, uh, uh, it is suppressed. And there is some uh, tortuous low signal intensity within this lesion. It could be vascular or, uh, yes, it is is in the supraclinoid process. And uh, yeah, there is uh, some tortuous hypo-intense signal intensity with this, this lesion, within this lesion. It is extra axial in uh, location. Um, uh, can I go to coronal T2, please? Mm -hmm. uh, um, this is not aneurysm. This is, uh, it, it, it contains Vascular and fatty, it has vascular and fatty contents well defined. So, um, I'm uh, it could be craniopharyngioma, however, it is asymmetrical, uh, it is mostly on the right left side, and it could be lipoma, but it, uh, it includes some vascular structures within it. And it could be if I would only give you T1, then what would you say? If I only provide you with one sequence and tell you to give me a diagnosis on this. Yes, it is very hyper intense. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, what will be hyper intense on T1? Very hyper intense. Yes, so my next question is, give me the, enumerate the causes of high T1 intensity in the brain sequence. Cyst, high T1. Fluid, cyst, blood. T1 high, T1 high. T1 high. Yes. Uh, it could be blood, blood products right. like uh, methemoglobin. Excellent. Yeah. So this could be also hemorrhagic. hemorrhaging. No, and, what else? Blood, uh, number one. Two. Muc no, mucus, no. Blood, contrast. Contrast. Okay. Uh, okay. Good. And uh, what else? Blood, mucus, and contrast, I mean. What is this? Fat. Yes. Bone. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Fat. Hmm. So, uh, your final, <laughs> most likely diagnosis. 
I think this is fatty thing because okay. it is, yeah, it could be a uh, ruptured dermoid again. And okay. it, it is, uh, yes, distributed within the- Next case. Yeah. Two weeks mm. of headache with, with blurred vision, tw 20 years old female, male. Uh, there is a well-defined hypodense lesion in the, uh, these selected images of non-contrast enhanced uh, CT. It is situated in the posterior fossa, specifically on the, uh, it is hypodense, well-defined on the uh, uh, left paramedian in location. It is very huge and uh, uh, pushing the, I think pushing the uh, fourth ventricle anteriorly. Um, uh, yeah, yes, and it is facing the fourth ventricle and is situated in the left uh, cerebellum, hypodense and uh, uh, hypodense. Um, the uh, surrounding uh, subarachnoid spaces and uh, looks hyper intense. Uh, it could be due to hemorrhage, subarachnoid hemorrhage. However, I would like to see some contrast uh, enhanced CT. Yeah, I'm giving you the contrast. This is post-contrast. Okay, let me show you. This is pre. Okay, then, this yeah. This is pre, and this is post. Okay, so this is cystic lesion in the posterior fossa, and I can see there is some mural uh, focal enhanced lesion, maybe mu mural nodule. So uh, this is lets me to think of uh, uh, cystic lesion in the posterior fossa, which uh, uh, in the top of the list is hemangioblastoma, and okay. it could be pilocystic astrocytoma or metastatic cystic metastasis lesions. And in young uh, male, this is uh, uh, the first thing uh, uh, comes to my mind is hemangioblastoma. Okay, and, this uh, patient also has high blood pressure. So can you correlate the hemangioblastoma yes. with high blood pressure? What do you think? And what would you like to do next? Yes, this could be within the, uh, the uh, uh, spectrum of von Hippelindu when there is association between hemangioblastoma and uh, uh, hemangioblastoma of the pancreas, liver, and uh, uh, the spleen. Also, there will be few chromocytoma of the adrenals. Okay, uh, so uh, which, I, uh, to, cut the, to cut it short, which phase do you want? I'm giving you in phase, okay? okay. What do you want next? I can have the out of face just to see. Okay, this is your yeah. out of face. What next? Uh, contrast enhanced, please. J sure. Yeah, just to see if oh, it sorry. is enhanced. Yeah. yeah, yeah, sorry, this one. Okay. Yeah, it is well enhanced. Mm -hmm. And so this is most probably pheochromocytoma of the left adrenal. I can mm -hmm. see the right adrenal also uh, is uh, big. Uh, yes. So maybe bilateral uh, uh, pheochromocytomas. Good. Uh, what else you can do to reconfirm your diagnosis of pheochromocytoma? Um, Just to reconfirm, you're absolutely right. What else? What else? Uh, ultrasound maybe? Or yeah, huh? Okay, okay, yeah. Uh, hmm. CT scan, nuclear medicine CT scan to see uh, the uptake. Uh, uh, iodine, okay, this is MIBIC. MIBIC Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yes. so you're absolutely correct. This is von Hippelinder syndrome. Um, it's a multi-system disorder, right? Yes. So you yeah. told about the adrenal, you told about the CNS. What, okay. where el what else would be the manifestations? And what the else spine would... also. The, it could be also distributed Excellent. within the spine. So we can right. also... What else? Uh, uh, hemangioblastoma in the liver, uh, pancreas, and both uh, uh, adrenals. There could be multiple cystic lesion in the pancreas. There may, may be multiple cystic and uh, uh, re, uh, cystic cyst in the renal or right. renal cell carcinoma also. Uh, Excellent, this, Dr. Yeah, these are all components of uh, von Hippelindo. Very well done, Dr. Uh, uh, Nuran. As always, uh, we have oh, we are out of time, so I will just start <laughs> with the feedback. Okay, so thank you. you correctly uh, said that that was a hemangioblastoma, right? Yeah. Yes. And uh, you correctly pointed out that in the in the in the contrast there is an enhancing mural nodule, and we went on to the MRI abdomen where it was enhancing avidly and few chromocytoma. So this was a case of von Hippelindo, and as you said, hemangioblastoma can be in the spine, in the brain. You should also look at the retina to yeah. look for the uh, retinal angiomas. In kidneys, mm -hmm. you will have renal cell carcinoma or cysts. In pancreas, you can have serous cyst adenomas, islet cell tumor, pancreatic cyst, and adenocarcinoma. But very well done. This was von Hippelindo. 
the this one i think the fact that we just uh, did it in the previous one maybe made it more confusing we just dr iman just showed <laughs> the ct version of the ruptured dermoid cyst yeah. So because of T, when we have T1 hyperintensity, our differential becomes very narrow, right? As you yeah. correctly said, blood products, proteins, fats, and contrast. Okay. So basically because we have T1 hyperintensity in the fissures, in the subarachnoid space, so just going with the uh, ruptured dermoid cyst was, uh, was good enough, okay? Thank well you. done. This one, you know, no matter how many times we have revised this yes, in yes. team sessions, this hyper and hypo <laughs> always confuses us. And this I was, was reading it before two hours, you know? Yeah, <laughs> and, yeah. I, I can totally understand. The, yeah. And this was confusing because so close to the sphenoid. So for a, moment, for a moment, you feel that this is sphenoid, but no, this is a empty cell, as you correctly said. And um, let me go to the uh, annotated images. Yeah. So this was the empty cell. This is the, um, sorry, um, uh, Dr. Nuran, uh, is it me? Yeah. So this yeah. is the uh, flattening of the sclera, the globe. The, yeah. Um, enlarged perineural sinuses, the uh, tortuous optic nerves, okay? Yeah. Yes, and yes. this mm -hmm. is the hypoplastic left transverse sinus and this is the stenosis of the right transverse sinus. The stenosis is one of the um, features of the benign intracranial hypertension. Yes. Um, the thing which they were trying to point out here, the radiopedia, that how do we know that something is hypoplastic or stenosed? So they were talking about the skull groove, that if the skull groove originally is shallow on the left, okay? And this is a uh, normal uh, uh, groove on the right. So that is why they're calling it as hypoplastic tra um, uh, transverse sinus on the left rather than uh, stenosed or thrombosed, okay? But uh, okay, we, there you. is no doubt that this is stenosed, the right transverse sinus, which goes with the uh, benign intracranial hypertension. And this thyroid haptalmapathy uh, was perfect. The only thing I was uh, pressing you because, you know, the straightforward cases always the examiner would put in extra questions. What I just wanted to tell you that we have to go to ophthalmology, the patient should be referred to ophthalmology because there would be increased intraorbital pressure. So there are chances of optic nerve or ophthalmic vein compression. Okay. So okay. steroid treatment is a must or, and if it does not, um, you know, if it does not uh, respond, then they might go for further intervention. Okay. Okay. So okay. I'm stopping you. my share. You can okay. start. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you too. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, uh, you can start. Okay, uh, I'm I'm going to request remote control from you. You can use it. Yeah. If so you want. sudden onset yeah. of headache. Patient data: forty to forty-five years old female. Okay. Uh, you you declined my request. Can you yeah. accept it? <laughs> do Do you want me to uh, move to you the? Uh... No, it's fine. I can okay. do it now. Okay. Okay. So this was a patient with sudden headache. Yes. Uh, I'm scrolling it. So I'm starting with the axial non-contrast CT images. I'm going craniocaudally. So um, as I go down, I can see that there are hyperdensities in the, um, in the, in the salsi. And Good. I can also see a hyperdense area in the left parietal occipital region surrounded by a hypodense area. Yeah. I'm going to the coronal non-contrast CT. So yes, which reconfirms the presence of a hyperdensity Good. surrounded by hypodense area, most likely uh, edema, but with a uh, uh, blood in the subarachnoid space as well. So I believe Good. this is a case of a left-sided subarachnoid hemorrhage with a linear hyperdense structure, which could be a, a DVA or a AV malformation. And I would uh, further press, uh, follow this patient further with the CT angiography or, DS, uh, or digital subtraction angiography. Um, okay. In the in the negative uh, um, uh, the pertinent negatives, I do not see any hydrocephalus per se at the moment, so we can discuss with the neurosurgery and proceed with the next step of CTA or DSA. Okay, you can proceed. Okay, so mm -hmm. we have the CT venogram. Yeah. 
axial yeah. images. Mm -hmm. So I'm drawing quadracranially. I'm at the posterior fossa. Uh, okay, this is bone, I guess. I can see the transverse sinuses and I can see this um, again linear vascular structure, which is in communication with the left transverse sinus. Maybe uh, it's not vascular, uh, you, but maybe it is tubular. <laughs> okay, sorry, tubular, yes. It's a yeah. tubular structure, you're right. Uh, let me just have a look at the sagittal images as well. So that uh, uh, increased density, is it extra or intraaxial? And where it is? This tubular um, hyperdense. I think it's intraaxial. Good. Intraaxial, so, surrounded by uh, edema. Good. And because it's tubular and it's vascular, that's why I'm more inclined towards a uh, venous anomaly, which has ruptured and led to the subarachnoid hemorrhage. No, you are thinking very well. You are on the straight line. So, so what do you think? What what kind of hemorrhage is this? Um, this is a venous, I guess. Uh, because it's okay. connected to the venous sinus. Good. So uh, I believe. How, okay, good. How how do you differentiate between uh, venous and arterial uh, hemorrhage, intracranial hemorrhage, or cerebral? Okay. Uh, basically, um, I would trace it, its uh, connect, connection with the uh, venous channels or the arteries. Mm -hmm. um, I, I I know I have connected the venous. But the mm -hmm. arterial, I'm failing to find, um, I'm not really sure if it's, I can trace the arterial communication. Which arterial. arterial territory is here? Is it in the arterial territory or? Uh, this hemorrhage, you mean? Yes. No, it's, it's, it's not in the arterial territory, actually. It is in the venous territory. Yeah, yeah, good. Uh, so what do you think, your last uh, suggestion or diagnosis? Um, actually, when I'm, saying that it is in the venous territory, I should be able to see, uh, also rule out if there is any filling defect in the venous sinuses, adjacent venous sinuses. Yeah. Um, so I'm seeing the transverse and the sigmoid, yeah. um, although they are, and this appear to be less, fill, less filled or less hypodense or less enhancing as compared to the right. Yes. So there is a probability of um, sinus thrombosis with venous hemorrhage. Uh, or venous infarct in this region, and as Good. well as subarachnoid hemorrhage. Okay, okay. What are the risk factors for uh, venous uh, infarct? Uh, the, ven uh, the venous infarct is the, any factor which leads to increased venous um, uh, thrombosis, like pregnancy, like um, uh, Im immobility, uh, travel, infection, like in mastoid regions. Um, yeah. Uh, which which reminded me that I should have looked at the mastoid regions as well and the mastoid air cells appear well aerated I believe. Why um, mastoid specifically? What 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 do you expect in mastoid? Um, I would expect uh, mastoiditis or the middle ear infection. Exactly. Uh, yes. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So good. this is the middle ear and the ossicles. They look fair enough. Good. So you can proceed to the next case, please. Yes. You did well here. Okay, so this is a hypertensive diabetic patient with mm -hmm. less than five days history of acute left-sided hemiplegia. Yeah. 75 year old female. Good. So I would start with the flare um, and I'm going to go quadrocranially. So I'm at the level of the posterior fossa. I can see that there is, there seems to be Subtle hyperintensity involving the uh, left medial temporal lobe, left parieto temporal region, actually. Um, a large sizable area on the right. There are few okay. hyperintense foci on the left side as well, uh, but this is an elderly female. Um, so it could be white matter microangiopathy. I'm just going down and I'm a bit uh, concerned about the left medial temporal lobe as well, but I will look at, uh, look at it at the other sequences to see if this is only a right-sided pathology or is it's involved in the left as well. No, I, on T2, it's basically, I feel 
a right-sided pathology, but again, a small hyperintensity in the left temporal lobe as well. I'll okay. have a look at the left, uh, at the T1. At the axial gradient. So what are you thinking about? It's a huge this, area of... Actually, yeah. in, the, in the first go, when I saw in the FLIR image, yeah. uh, for me, it was a left MCA territory infarction. Yeah. Which I believe that in the um, in the in the DWI and the ADC, this large area appears to be restricted. So yes, it's a large MCA territory infarction. Okay. In patient. Okay. Yeah. So uh, which is the most common uh, territory for infarction? Uh, I think MCA, middle cerebral MCA. artery. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And uh, uh, how you assess a stroke uh, normally in in your routine exam? I think this is where the Alberta stroke comes in. Yeah, so we yeah. we look at the uh, we see the involvement of the caudate, the uh, the uh, the uh, lentiform, the basal ganglia, and above we would look at the centrum semi ovale and the corona radiata. And, well, that uh, one for as aspecta when you when you need to do hemodialysis. But first of all, you should uh, decide whether this is what uh, is it a normal stroke or is, is there anything okay. uh, superimposed on it? Mm -hmm. uh, for example, I think we should rule out whether there are other territories involved as well to rule out the process of thromboembolism, um, if there are more than one territory involved. And um, is there in types for it, for the infarct or the stroke? Uh, you, uh, the other one, I think you are talking about the watershed infarct and the major territorial infarct. No, no, within the, this, the this area, what you yes. should first uh, evaluate. Uh, okay. Um, whether there are any hemorrhagic foci as well? Exactly. Perfect. Yes. Yeah. Yes. If, yes. If, if it is ischemic or uh, hemorrhagic. Hemorrhagic. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because the management the, differ in between. Exactly. And the gradient echo does not show any blooming artifacts. So this is basically an ischemic, ischemic infarct with no hemorrhagic component at the time of study. Yeah. So so then you can extend to as, aspect uh, for hemodialysis or uh, thrombotic uh, approach. So what are the other causes or what in general the causes of hypertensive uh, hemorrhage or intracranial hemorrhages? Sorry, not hypertensive. Hyp Hypertension is one of them, but what are the causes of intracranial hemorrhage? Okay, so the causes of intracranial hemorrhage, as we mentioned first, is the hypertension. Yeah. Second, it can be due to amyloid angiopathy. Thirdly, it can right. be due to the hemorrhagic metastases, like rupture of hemorrhagic tumor, whether primary, like GBM, or hemorrhagic metastases. Mm -hmm. It could be, um, uh, you know, the venous thrombosis can lead to hemorrhagic infarcts. So again, that would be intracranial hemorrhage. And AV malformations, dual AV fistulas, um, uh, that can lead to, and uh, bleeding disorders in general, they can also lead to uh, intracranial hemorrhage and trauma, for sure. Great. And uh, in the beginning, the ischemic infarct, which can go into hemorrhagic uh, right. transformation. Exactly. Yeah, yes. exactly. Great. So you can proceed to the other case, please. Okay, we will make this the last case, Dr. Nuran, because okay. we are reaching okay. our time. So 55-year-old yeah. male, headache, dizziness, and abnormal gait with yeah. bilateral lower limb heaviness in a 55-year-old male. Mm -hmm. Headache, dizziness, and abnormal gait with lower limb numbness. So I will start. I have been given multi-sequential um, MRI brain, and I'm starting with the axial T2. I'm going um, craniocordially. So I'm mm -hmm. scrolling through the images. I can see that there is a hype, a T2 hyper intense area involving the left paracel of the fine region. Um, I'm scrolling down. Okay, I'm looking at the axial T1. Okay, this also seems to involve the splenium of the corpus callosum. I'm going to look at the coronal T2. So left. And, two. and there is also uh, there is uh, crossing to the other side, crossing the midline, and involving the contralateral. Um, what uh, is the signal intensity of this lesion? Uh, it is T two hyper. Is it hyper? Just look uh, to the lesion. Uh, yeah, you see in the region of the spleen uh, in the corpus callosum. Yeah. It is. It is iso to. Uh, 
maybe hypo as well. Yes. There is a is. hypo component as well. And surrounded with uh, some finger like. Um, I mean, surrounded with hyper intensity. Yeah. Which is? Uh, due which is to... edema. Yeah. What kind and of edema it, is this? It would be the vasogenic edema. Good. And it is um, crossing the midline and uh, on axial DWI, um, it is showing hyper intensity, um, also involving the stenium of the corpus callosum. Of course, in my routine practice, I would look also to, at the ADC, but I'm presuming this is low on ADC, so diffusion restriction. Um, on the contrast, it is, it is um, um, enhancing. Um, so I believe with the characteristic of, this is basically a butterfly lesion, which is crossing across the corpus callosum to the other side. And considering that it has a bit of hypo-intense component with it, um, uh, lymphoma, CNS lymphoma would be the prime differential, followed mm -hmm. by a glioblastoma multiforme. Um, yeah. I would uh, discuss this with the neurosurgical team and the patient will be discussed with the MDT. Do you want to see me to see the MRS as well? No, uh, I don't think they ask a lot of about, okay. about MRS. But while you are in the MDT discussion, so and uh, the surgeon asks uh, you your last decision, if it is lymphoma or uh, GBM. So how you can differentiate between them according to these images? Um, I think as... Um, um, I said before that it is a bit iso intense. Um, okay. The GBM, I would expect it to be more necrotic with a lot of uh, cystic component as well, because um, uh, it has a lot of necrotic component, while lymphoma would be more tightly packed cells. Good. Very and nice. that is why yeah. it has mm -hmm. a restricted diffusion. And hence, if I have to give one differential, I would go with lymphoma. Good. And uh, of course, uh, uh, this is periventricular and subependymal. It is very obvious here that it is a multiple periventricular and subependymal extension in lymphoma. Right. And uh, uh, what about the surrounded uh, edema? Is, does it differ between two situations? I think with GBM, because of its necrotic and aggressive component, the edema would be more in GBM as compared yeah, to the yes. lymphoma. Yes. Even, uh, because of, of its cystic uh, components, the uh, contrast after contrast enhancement, there will be thick irregular uh, rind of enhancement in GBM. However, here there will be dense enhancement. So these factors, enhancement surrounding edema and uh, the subependymal and subventricular uh, extension of uh, uh, lymphoma. However, in GBM, it will be more mass uh, in uh, uh, has mass effect more. So these three factors can be differentiated between uh, both situations. You did very well, uh, Dr. Sabahat, as you do always. Uh, if you want, I can uh, proceed if we have enough time or... Uh, I think we are uh, way past time. We can go with the feedback. I would love to do more cases, but we have to be respectful <laughs> of others' time as well. Okay. So uh, I just explained this. This is the case of primary lymphoma in the brain. And uh, it Sorry. is solid uh, and immune compromised. Uh, it can be uh, cystic, uh, but this is a primary lymphoma uh, and it is solid. And uh, we set the main differential between lymphoma and GBM. You did very well in this. We can proceed to the previous one. Uh, mm -hmm. The previous one, yes, this is uh, infarct, uh, the arterial infarct in the MCA territory, and uh, I just wanted to show the differences between uh, venous and uh, arterial infarct, uh, infarct. And this is uh, just keep to the MCA territory with, uh, it is ischemic. And when we analyze uh, uh, between the two, we first should assess if it is ischemic or hemorrhagic uh, because the management differ between both of them. And you did very well by explaining the aspect. Uh, aspect. Yeah, uh, this is very well. We can proceed to the other case, please. Yeah, sorry. Uh, is it? I'm, 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 I think I did something wrong. Uh, somebody has has to unmute. Somebody, please mute yourself. Okay. So uh, this this case was uh, Venus. Excuse me. Because <laughs> I, uh, can any of the co-host mute the other person, please? Yes, go ahead, Dr. Nuran. Sorry. 
Yeah, and this case was, uh, as you, uh, you did very well with it. Uh, uh, this is Venus in fact, uh, and in, in Venus uh, in fact, and uh, uh, stroke, I mean, uh, the, uh, the Venus, uh, it's it not uh, uh, constrict to a specific territory, but it could be in more than one territory, mostly uh, cortical or subcortical. The edema extends to the cortex and uh, uh, of course, uh, either it is idiopathic or it could be due to infection or uh, 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 thrombosis, venous thrombosis. And you did very well in this case and you enumerate all the risk factors here. Uh, I think it is good. Uh, okay. Perfect. I, okay. I wish you a very good luck in the exam. Uh, I think we are done. Yeah, there were three cases, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Thank yeah. you so much, Dr. Nuran. Um, I think you can stop sharing the screen. Okay, and thank, thank you, you. everyone uh, for attending and participating. See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.